Okay, page 318, chapter 8, lesson 3, symbiosis. You can also say symbiosis. So, put your name, put the class, the date. It's going to be Tuesday, April 6th, 2021. Science F&T, chapter 8, lesson 3, page 318, symbiosis. Main idea slash essential question. Read it with me. Symbiosis is a close relationship between two different species. Symbiotic relationships include mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Copy that down. Fold the paper in half. Vocabulary words. First one, commensalism, page 319. Find the page, find the word. Commensalism. Commensalism is a relationship between two species in which one species benefits, while the other species is neither harmed nor helped. So, one species benefits, zoop, other neither harmed nor helped. Remember to indent so that you can see that both of those lines go with this one word. So in commensalism, one species benefits, and the other one doesn't get hurt or helped. It just kind of almost doesn't even notice that anything is there. Mutualism. Mutualism. Go back to the start of the sentence. When two species both benefit from their relationship, the relationship is called mutualism. 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 Okay? Look at the root word of that. Mutual. Like a mutual benefit. Both benefit. Okay. So mutualism. Both benefit. Parasitism. Page 320. Parasitism is a relationship between two species in which one species benefits while the other species is harmed. So parasitism, one benefits, soup, other harmed. Symbiosis. In symbiosis, 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 you can also say symbiosis, two species have a close living relationship, period. Okay, symbiosis, two species have close living relationship. So, commensalism, mutualism, and parasitism are all types of symbiosis. All three of those are within the umbrella of symbiosis. <clears throat> okay, first section, mutualism and commensalism. Mutualism and commensalism. Let's remind ourselves what these things mean. Mutualism, both benefit. Commensalism, one benefits, the other is neither harm nor helped. So it basically kind of doesn't notice. Organisms can interact with one another in many different ways. Three major types of interactions among organisms are predation, like predators and prey, competition, so they're competing with each other, and symbiotic relationships. Those are the ones we just talked about in our vocabulary words. So predation, zoop, competition, zoop, symbiotic. All right. You have already learned about predation, in which animals eat other animals. Okay, so predation, a little arrow, that's predator versus prey. Competition occurs when two species try to use the same limited resource, such as a food supply, a source of water, or a type of shelter. Competition is reduced when organisms occupy different niches. So remember we talked about the warblers in the same tree, but they... Um, hatch and nest at different times, and they also eat in different areas of the tree, so they do not compete as much. Okay, so competition, arrow, use same resources. In symbiosis, two species have a close living relationship. Symbiotic relationships include mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Practice saying those words. Symbiotic relationships, Mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. Okay, when two species both benefit from their relationship, the relationship is called mutualism. Mutualism. Mutualism, we're reminding ourselves that that is both. One example of mutualism is the relationship between sea anemones, say that, anemones, and clownfish. Okay, 
So, E period, G period, for example given, notice it's indented, sea anemones, anemones, plus clownfish. What's a clownfish? Well, that's like Nemo, so put Nemo over there to remind yourself that that's what a clownfish is. Anemones feed on fish and other marine creatures. They do not move from place to place, but use stinging tentacles to capture passing creatures. Okay, so sea anemones, arrow, stinging tentacles. Clownfish live among the anemone tentacles, but are immune to the stings. So, arrows from the clownfish to the word immune, and stinging tentacles immune. Okay, so clownfish are immune to the stinging tentacles that the sea anemones use. In this way, the anemone protects the clownfish from being eaten by other fish. The clownfish, in turn, helps the anemone by cleaning its tentacles and chasing away fish that eat anemone tentacles. So they protect each other. The relationship between oxpeckers, it's a type of bird, and a hippopotamus is also an example of mutualism. So, straight down from that example, oxpecker plus hippopotamus. The birds eat ticks living on the hippo skin. So, oxpecker, arrow, eat ticks. The birds benefit because they get a meal. The hippo benefits because the ticks are removed from its back. All right, so eat ticks, arrow, food. Hippopotamus, clean. Okay, so they're both benefiting. The oxpecker gets food, the hippopotamus gets to be clean from parasites and ticks. All right, commensalism. Commensalism is a relationship between two species in which one species benefits while the other species is neither harmed nor helped. So, commensalism is when one of the species is helped. A robin building a nest in an oak is an example. Okay, so, for example, a robin, those are brackets, the little square parentheses, building a nest, and an oak tree. Okay, the robin gains a safe place to lay its eggs, while the oak is neither harmed nor helped. Some barnacles attached to a whale and remoras attached to a shark are other examples. So a barnacle and a whale, what does the barnacle get? Food! Same thing with a remora. It gets food and it's attached to a shark. But the whale and shark are not harmed and they're not really getting helped either. Let's see. Not many relationships are commensal. More often, one species is helped or harmed at least slightly. So, commensalism, where one creature is helped and the other is basically not harmed and not helped either way, this is rare, so equals rare. Okay, let's read the pictures. Mutualism. The sea anemones, stinging tentacles, keep the clownfish's predators away. And the clownfish keeps the sea anemone clean. Okay, we wrote that in our notes. The stinging tentacles, the immunity, and the protecting each other. A lichen is an alga and a fungus living in mutualism. An alga and a fungus. So it's like algae and fungus combined, like mushrooms plus algae. That's why these kind of look like mushrooms, but they're also kind of green. The fungus provides a moist, nutritious home for the algae, or alga. The alga provides food by photosynthesis. Okay. Commensalism. Small fish hide from predators near the poisonous tentacles of a jellyfish. The jellyfish is unaffected by the fish. So this, with the jellyfish, is kind of similar to what's going on with the clownfish and the anemones. Right? These fish are able to survive the stings, and they hang out here, and they get food, but they also get protection. Because other fish come along wanting to eat these little fish, can't get too close to the tentacles or they'll get stung. And the jellyfish says it's unaffected, so maybe they eat some parasites, or maybe it just doesn't even notice. If it says commensalism, and that means only one's benefiting and the other, nothing happens. So the little fish are benefiting by having a safe place and maybe some food. And the jellyfish basically is unaffected. Not harmed, not helped. Okay, compare and contrast. How are mutualism and commensalism, commensalism similar? And how are they different? Okay, mutualism and commensalism are similar 
because at least one species is benefiting in this symbiosis, right? Commensalism is one, mutualism is both. That's how they are different. Mutualism and commensalism are different because in mutualism, both species benefit. But in commensalism, the other species is neither harmed nor helped. Then you could give examples, right? Examples of mutualism where both benefit include sea anemones and clownfish, or oxpeckers and hippopotami, hippopotamus. An example of commensalism where one is benefiting and the other doesn't even really notice is like a robin building a nest in a tree, or a barnacle on a whale, or a remora on a shark. <laughs> Look how many sentences you can get out of that. One question for similarities and differences. You can talk about similarities, differences, and you can give at least like three examples. There's a five or six paragraph sentence just on this one question. Five, six sentence paragraph based on one question. Okay, flip it over. Parasitism in red. Parasitism. Parasitism is a relationship between two species in which one species benefits while the other species is harmed. So one benefits, other harmed. The organism causing harm is called a parasite. So parasite causes harm. The harmed organism is called the host. Host gets harmed. The ticks that live on the skin of a hippopotamus are parasites. Hey, this sounds like an example, doesn't it? So let's put example, and let's put tick versus hippo, right? Instead of it being an and, where they just happen to be close together, or instead of a plus, where they're both benefiting from each other, see how we did that differently? Mutualism, both are benefiting, so we say plus. Commensalism, only one is benefiting, so we just say and, because the other's just kind of there. Parasitism, they're like working against each other, so that's a versus. Tick versus hippo. Okay, well, the tick is the parasite, and the hippo is the host. Let's read about what they get. The ticks feed on blood that they draw from the hippo, harming the hippo. Okay, so the tick gets food. How is the hippo harmed? Let's see. Parasites usually weaken their hosts slowly instead of killing them quickly. Ah, so they become more weak. Now, they usually weaken to get a food supply. By feeding on a living host, the parasite maintains a constant food supply instead of getting just a few meals. Right? So if they kill something, question mark, well, then you only get a few meals. That's why they usually weaken them to keep a constant food supply. Leeches, tapeworms, and fleas are common examples of parasites. Okay, well, those are all examples then. Leeches, tapeworms, fleas. <clears throat> These organisms all have specialized mouth parts, allowing them to attach to the skin of other parts of their hosts. Most live off the host's blood. And now we have this big giant picture on page 320 explaining the process, so we put page 320. Okay, step one, a pig eats food that is contaminated with tapeworm eggs. If you zoom in on a microscope at a tapeworm, that's what it looks like. The tapeworm uses two different hosts in its life cycle. Okay, so the first host is the one where they're eating the eggs. And then here's a gross picture of the muscle tissue zoomed in, and they get these cysts where the eggs are growing. Tapeworm eggs hatch in the pig's intestine. So it hatches inside their intestines. Larvae travel to the pig's muscles and form cysts. So these little larvae are so tiny that they can crawl and worm their way out to the muscle tissue. Humans become infected when they eat raw or undercooked pork that contains cysts. So imagine that somebody has like some chorizo or some chicharrones or something like that and it's not totally cooked. You could be eating that. And now the cysts mature into adult tapeworms in the human intestine. You could have a tapeworm inside you, literally this giant tape-looking thing inside your guts, eating some of the food that you're trying to eat, stealing your energy. Tapeworm eggs leave the body in human feces. So you go to the bathroom, and the eggs come out. Eventually, if we don't clean our water, or let's say, you know, we go to the bathroom on the ground or something, or like have diarrhea in the pool or something like that, those eggs can make it back into the food that the pigs eat. A pig eats food that's contaminated with tapeworm eggs. So if those tapeworm eggs somehow make it to the pig food, it starts the whole cycle over again. Now, 
maybe it's not humans. Maybe it's more pigs. Maybe the pig is contaminated and poops on the ground and it like splashes on the food and other pigs eat that food, not noticing, and then they get sick and that whole cycle just continues. So there is a gross example of parasitism. Okay, that'll be it for day one. Day two, we'll do types of parasites, symbiosis with humans, and we will do our phase two, where we annotate and highlight the key details that support our main idea and essential question. All right, good job persevering with the growth mindset, and roar, wildcats!